Well, you say, I don't understand. Where did, where did vaccinations even come from? I mean, should we, you know, what do we think about them? Well, I'll give you the history of vaccinations. It says inoculation was adopted both in England and America nearly half a century before Jenner's famous smallpox vaccination in 1796. Now, if you go online and you do research, which I highly recommend, I highly recommend that you do as much research as possible because I'm not afraid of the truth about vaccination. If you research it, if you study it yourself, you'll find all the things that I'm saying are the exact same information. And if you don't research it, you're basically saying, I don't care about my children. I don't care. I'm just apathetic. I want them to die. I want them to suffer. I want them to have autism and autoimmune disease and all kinds of illness. That's what you're saying. But if you go back, basically they're, they're just trying to like pick out stuff that sounds kind of like a vaccination. Really, it came into existence in the 1796. So it's kind of where we really see vaccination coming into play. So that's where I'm going to focus. It says there was a small packs smallpox vaccination in, 19, in 1796. Now, in this vaccine, they had a death rate of about 2%. So one out of 50 people that got this vaccine just died. Like, hey, one out of 50 of y'all, you're just gonna die after we inject you with this vaccine, okay? Sounds pretty, pretty safe, huh? It says there were so many dangerous outbreaks of the disease, it remained controversial. It was noticed during the 18th century that people had suffered from the less uh, virulent cowpox were immune to smallpox, and the first recorded use of this idea was by a farmer, Benjamin Jesley, at Yes Minister in Dorset, who had suffered the disease and transmitted it to his own family in 1774, his son subsequently not getting the mild version of smallpox when later inoculated in 1789. So what happened? There was these big outbreaks of this disease called smallpox. So they created a smallpox vaccine. But, you know, 2% of people are just straight out dying from this vaccine. So then somebody has a different uh, vaccine called cowpox, which is basically they get the disease from the cow and they inject it in the people. And they found that they were somehow getting immunity from smallpox from this other vaccine, but they weren't dying immediately. You know, there was less death from this. So they, basically this is when somebody has the idea, I'm gonna just pick a child that doesn't have the disease, I'm just gonna give them this cowpox vaccine and we'll see, you know, what happens. Well, it says it was Edward Jenner, a doctor in Berkeley and Glucoshire, who established the procedure by introducing material from a cowpox vestal on Sarah Neelms, a milkmaid, into the arm of a boy named James Phillips. Two months later, he inoculated the boy with smallpox and the disease did not develop. So basically they gave this kid smallpox after giving him the vaccine to see and he didn't get sick. So they're like, oh wow, I guess the, you know, the vaccine really worked. On a seven-year-old, what in the world? What kind of people are t you know, experimenting on random seven-year-old children to try and see, hey, is this vaccine gonna work? Sounds like a really you know, great way to start off. Basically they were shooting him in the arm. After they felt like they had you know, developed this, it says by 1801, his report was translated into six languages and over 100,000 people were vaccinated. Even though there's many people that are against it because they're injecting you with animal products or animal diseases and all kinds of stuff. It says, since then, vaccination campaigns have spread throughout the globe, sometimes prescribed by law or regulations. Vaccines are now used against a wide variety of diseases. Louis Pasteur further developed the technique during the 19th century, extending its use to killed agents protecting against anthrax and rabies. The method Pasteur used entailed treating the agents for those diseases so they lost the ability to infect, whereas inoculation was the hopeful selection of the less virulent form of the disease. Let me just explain what they're doing. Basically what they've decided is they're gonna take a small version of a disease. They're gonna try and take a small, maybe it's an activated or it's a deactivated version of it, depends on the time frame or whatever. But they're just gonna give you a small dose of the disease in the hopes that your body will create antibodies, will create the response of immunity in your system to where if you're exposed to a larger version of it or you're exposed in the future, you somehow wouldn't get sick. So they're basically saying instead of, you know, you getting sick in the future, we'll just try to get you a little sick now so you won't get really sick in the future. That's basically the, the, how vaccines work, okay? And even in the modern today, they'll say, well, we'll give you an unactivated version of the disease and it triggers in the body what's called a T2 cell response. So you have different parts of your body 
A T1 response in your, in your cells is basically when you get the sickness and your body starts producing antibodies to fight that illness. Your body can, you can produce you know, a certain response to a disease to fight it and to kill it. And once that's in your body, now you can become what's called immune. Meaning if you're exposed to that particular illness or, uh, or whatever in the future, your body already knows how to fight it. You're not going to contract it again. We think of like chicken pox. If people get chicken pox when they're really young, their body builds an immunity to it, okay, so then they, they're very unlikely to get that disease ever again in the future because their bodies produce the, this immunity. So they're trying to fake it by you not getting really the disease, but rather getting a deactivated version of the disease, hoping that your body will produce these antibodies or this immunity in your body and you won't get the disease. The problem is, is it doesn't really work. They don't actually trigger the same response as the disease, they trigger a fake response, so it ends up really not doing anything. Now, if, that was, if it was true, let's say, you know, if you could trigger this response and get the immunity, and then in the future you're never gonna contract the disease, maybe you could argue that somehow it kinda makes sense. I still don't think it makes sense, because Jesus Christ said, they that be holy, not a physician, right? But the problem is, is not just that. It's all the other ingredients that they're also injecting in your body along with these deactivated diseases.